T-Biz Podcast delivers T-News that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Think of us as a digital caravan of storytellers, bringing authentic, authoritative, and exclusive stories to you weekly from the tea lands. Welcome, and here are the headlines. Mombasa expands tea auctions to five days a week. Spiking prices dismay Russian tea drinkers. A 6.4 earthquake shakes Assam, but tea factory damage is minor. Vadim Tea mobilizes emergency aid to India. More in a minute, but first, this important message. Avani empowers rural women practicing sustainable agriculture, including tea and crafts, such as weaving with natural fiber and plant-based dyes. Up in the towering Himalayas, Kuman is one of India's oldest tea regions. Today, we raise our cups in the name of Avani Kuman a nonprofit dedicated to strengthening farming communities. Cheers to a brighter future for all. To donate, visit avani-kuman.org. Low auction prices for Kenya and other East African teas have persisted for the past three years due to oversupply. During the past nine months, the average price of $2.52 per kilo declined by 8.6%. Teas auctioned by the Kenya Tea Development Agency generally sell for more than teas from elsewhere, but are down 12%. Recent auction averages of $1.81 per kilo are well below the cost of production for many factories. The country's Agriculture and Food Authority also blames the decline on weak demand due to the coronavirus lockdowns and the devaluation of many foreign currencies. Meanwhile, favorable weather and increased acreage under tea with each passing year lead to greater surplus volumes, adding to already high stocks. Two developments this week will likely further Royal Mombasa, on April 24th, the government announced that auctions will be expanded from two to five days a week later this spring. And last Friday, detectives with the Directorate of Criminal Investigation seized both KTDA records and equipment and those of the East Africa Tea Traders Association. No sales were conducted Monday. Business Insight the Colombo Tea Auction in Sri Lanka is conducted on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Annual sales volume of 300 million kilos is comparable to the 450 million kilos auctioned in Mombasa. In 2020, after 127 years, Colombo's traditional auction went digital, but retains its two-day-a-week schedule. John Snell, owner and CEO of Ellis Tea in Ontario, Canada, has been buying tea in commercial quantities since 1984. A former trading manager for multinationals purchasing East African tea, Snell shared his thoughts on the expanded schedule. A Mombasa tea auction for five days a week? Irrespective of technology allowing you to do so, the suggestion that the capacity is there for buyers and traders to attend all week is misplaced. It speaks to a lack of consultation, which could very charitably be called out as a missed opportunity to get things right, and is another example of the disconnect between state and commerce, which sometimes manifests itself when there is regime change afoot. I'm not suggesting for one minute that the current system is perfect either, but if you have ever sat in an auction and seen the feeding frenzy that can occur through good selling or indeed by the recognition of limited time and tea, this environment conjures, then future auction fatigue could dampen this effect. I also wonder whether there has been consideration for the impact that a five-day investment in time is going to have on buyers' choice as to where they buy their tea. Of course, 
Kenya produces much of the exported tea in the world and sales will not stop because of this decision. But will it help or hinder? Whichever, I can emphatically state that it will not change the fundamentals of this market or the lot of the smallholder farmers it purports to help. That will require much more work. The pandemic and economic consequences caused tea prices at retail to increase by 2 to 10% in Russia last year, and prices there continue to climb in 2021. Rising freight costs, packaging expenses, and a weak ruble against the dollar also increased the cost of raw materials. Natalia Elazarova with the Russian Association of Tea and Coffee Producers explains that it could be worse. Price growth is restricted because producers are concerned with the decline of purchasing power by consumers and the declining popularity of tea among the youth, as many switched to coffee in recent years. The association does not expect the Russian tea market to expand this year. Sales volumes are growing at minimal levels, she said, making 2021 much like 2020. Learn more on the T-Biz blog. A 6.4 earthquake shook Assam this week. The strong quake was followed by several aftershocks that rattled rafters and nerves on April 28th, but caused only minor damage to tea processing factories throughout the region. Bhupinder Singh, chairman of the Assam branch of the India Tea Association, said, quote, we were lucky to have got away with no injuries to employees and their dependents from member gardens. The National Center for Seismology put the epicenter of the 8 a.m. quake near Sonapur, a very seismically active area along the Kopili Fault. The last major quake in July 1960 measured 6.0. Vanam T this week donated $50,000 to launch a fundraiser as part of hashtag Rise Together for India, a COVID-19 emergency relief fund. Donations will assist the nonprofit Doctors for You who deliver relief services across India. The company seeks to mobilize tea drinkers worldwide to set up temporary COVID treatment facilities acquire oxygen cylinders and oxygen concentrators, and facilitate rapid vaccination efforts. India reported more than 2 million COVID cases in the past 10 days. Learn more and find a Keto crowdfunding link to donate on the T-Biz blog. Arvinda Anantharaman in Bengaluru reports on India's tea auction prices. India Tea Price Report for the week ending April 24th. The week was dominated by the raging second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic across the country. Added to this, the tea regions are all struggling with dry weather. The Indian Tea Association issued a press release on 21st April that details the extent of damage from the extreme and prolonged dry weather. There has been very little rain, nearly reduced by half of what was received last year. The Sam Valley received 14.2 mm rainfall for January and February 2021, as against 28.47 mm in 2020. Kachar received only almost half the rainfall at 4.15 mm this year, as against 8.3 mm in 2020. In North Bengal, the Terai region received 6.15 mm rain, as against 19.1 mm last year. The hailstorm in Assam and North Bengal earlier in the month was also more severe than usual. Several tea gardens have seen damage to mature and young tea bushes. The scale of damage is reported to be more extensive than usual. Chengmari Tea Estate also reported extensive damage to workers' houses. This is the main harvest season and producers would hope to see a revival after 2020 are now doubly worried. Assam produces around 4.5% of its total crop in March and around 6% in April. Assam media reported that workers of the Mokrong Tea Estate did not work for two days in April as there were no leaves to pluck where 2,500 to 3,000 kilos are produced every day. This month saw plucking of, of, and production of 250 to 300 kilos. 
So production is down by at least 30% and in some places as much as by 60%. In auction watch this week, sales 16 saw about 70% uptake across South and North India, which was encouraging. Kolkata auction saw about 91% of the orthodox leaf on offer sold. And now, a word from our sponsor. Q-Trade Tees works with tea purveyors at every scale, from promising startups to the world's largest multinational beverage brands in the hot, iced, and bottled tea segments. With U.S.-based formulation, blending, and packaging services, Q-Trade can help you innovate, scale up, and grow your specialty tea brand. For more information, visit our website, QTradeTees.com. This week, T-Biz visits the fabled Darjeeling tea growing region in the Himalayan foothills of northwestern India. And we travel to Seattle for the launch of the Organic Marketing Association, a group that conveys the complexities of organic cultivation with memorable memes, clever ditties, and illustrations that radiate the joy of farming in harmony with nature. Darjeeling is the most famous of India's tea-growing regions. Revenue from its spring flush make it the most lucrative as well. But the plants there are aging. Wage inflation is high and workers are restless. Innovation is overdue. Arvinda Anantharaman files this report. Hishi Sarya is a third-generation planter managing the Gopaldara and Rohini estates in Darjeeling. Among other things, he has put Darjeeling's autumn flush teas on the map by producing a flavorful range of oolong styled teas. We spoke to Rishi about Darjeeling from the point of view of a planter on where things stand, what it needs, and of course, the competition from Nepal. Where does Darjeeling tea stand compared to, say, even 10, 20 years ago? There has been a lot of progress, in my opinion. See, India has, is a far more progressive country than what it was doing between 1980 to 2000. What we have achieved between 1980 to 2000 in terms of economic growth, we have certainly outpassed that by a long margin between 2000 and 2020. That has had an effect on the tea industry as a whole. So our wages have gone up faster than what we would have liked. So that is one challenge. That is one of the reasons why there is a lot of who and cry. Inflation has been rampant. Wage inflation was roughly 3 to 4 percent sometimes it is in 15 percent so wage inflation is a huge issue that has been a problem why people are always talking of the setbacks in the the industry but if you look at uh, offer wise i mean we never used to make a lot of green tea which which darjeeling has added a lot of green tea darjeeling was never known for speciality tea the definition of u.s speciality tea association and what a tea shop thinks of speciality tea is very different. If you would go through catalogs 20 years back, you would find Dazzling First Flush and Dazzling Second Flush in a retailer's catalog. At least that has changed. You have what you call very tippy moonlight style teas now. You have uh, second flushes, you have green teas, you have white teas, you have some special hand-rolled, handmade stuff also. So at least from two teas, we could have gone gone to eight or ten teas. There is a lot of innovation happening, and they, it's happening more with farms which are uh, which are realizing that what change needs to come in. Oolongs, you talk about oolongs. I mean, who thought Darjeeling would make oolongs? They were like, you can't make oolongs. That is what the first reaction was. I'm being very honest on this. I, I in my sane mind, would not have thought we don't have a proper T Research Institute, which guides you to all these things. I mean, a lot of the younger generation, they are taking a lot of effort. So once you take effort, you tend to learn. Some of the retailers actually, you know, they started writing oolongs from that. They're like, why why we can't make oolongs? Well, you don't know how to. You don't even have an oolong clone with you. So we started identifying, then we started learning how to plug them. We, we used to send samples and used to get the response, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. Then we started hitting some right notes and, you know, then all these things, you know, when you start thinking like we learned so much, then we realized how to make mountain peaks. 
ओके वी डोंट नो सो मच बट वी कैन ऑलवेज लर्न आई थिंक द दार्जिलिंग टी फील्ड हैव टू गेट अपग्रेडेड एंड दैट विल टेक अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम कैन वी अपग्रेड अ फील्ड फास्ट इन टू स्टिल बी रेलिवेंट What about the plantation model itself? Is it still workable? See, in India, we have not been able to make quality tea out of bulky spot. It is only tea studio, I think, which is yeah. able to figure out one way of doing it. But based on what I see, it is certainly not happening in a very, very large scale. Just to say that the plantation model has no future, I think it is not fair. An educated, resourceful owner with assured workers. it has its strength i mean yeah. i think that combination has something to offer what are your views on the competition from nepal tea as a indian who has you know my mother used to be from nepal so i i don't think of nepal as nepal the country you know for me nepal is like my mom's home country and we have gone to nepal whenever we wanted to siliguri as a community has always traded with nepal i have not thought of nepal as something very foreign so for me to say that you know there is competition from nepal it's like telling yaar my, my chacha or my friend has put up a tea estate they are allowed to do their thing why are you so worried where i think is the fact that nepalis are not doing enough to promote tea in their own country secondly see nepal is a bottle leaf model there is a lot of dumping which just goes on you know they just dump the tea so the nepal tea state as a whole so per hectare revenue must be lower than that of darjeeling let's say i mean it, last year i heard that they even sold their high mountain green leaf for indian rupees 20 a ctc leaf last year was selling at 35 this year it is selling at 32 nepal factories nepal traders may be making money things are really you know it's uh, people don't understand nepal tea industry also needs to understand that they have to stop this dumping model i don't know if you've ever bought tea from nepal but uh, or you've seen how the nepal trade is organized they just send you 2000 kgs of darjeeling style tea samples and they expect you to buy it now the buyer is going to pay you what he's going to pay you peanuts so most of darjeeling is organic now that is one strategy which some darjeeling tea producers have taken i don't know if it's working for them or not but it's very difficult in my opinion that because i see things very differently in darjeeling the rest of us like what we try to do is we may make better tea Dennis Weaver is the co-founder and president of the Organic Marketing Association, a nonprofit the growers cannot pay to join. The consumer-facing OMA celebrates the fun side of organics by building awareness with slogans, puns, and Instagram-inspired illustrations of vegetables, like a celery with the headline "Stalking You" or lemons calling you to pucker up, baby. OMA's slogan is the double entendre, organic, eat me. Weaver explains that organic food is delicious and nutritious. So why is organic stuck at 5% market share with plantings on only 1% of U.S. acreage, he asks. One reason is that organic suppliers spend too much time talking about what's not organic. They are in a defensive bubble, he says. Consumers are far more interested in how tasty, fun, and easy it is to choose organics. "Quote: We won't try to educate anyone. Instead, we'll focus on making positive associations with the word organic and the things that make people happy. It's a simple formula that works," says Weaver. Sales of organic foods and beverages are steady, with broad distribution in the U.S. But growth has plateaued in the 15 years since organic foods first became available at mainstream grocers. How did OMA come about? A group of us from a wide ranging of backgrounds happened to believe that organic good food is the best for you, me, and the planet, and more people ought to be enjoying the wholesome, healthful benefits of organic good foods. So we've created the Organic Marketing Association to do just that to inspire you. The Organic Marketing Association is a new, fresh, bold, high-energy nonprofit 
designed to present organics in the positive always. We're flipping the script to the fun, delicious, and entertaining side. We're not here to educate anyone. We will spend our time and energies and efforts presenting things that make people happy. It's a simple form of the works. It's called the law of attraction. The law of attraction states people are more apt to move towards what they want rather than to avoid. We're walking away from the same old, same old, tired, organic narrative, a narrative that was negative, argumentative, disparaging. Describe OMA's newly launched website and how it breaks free of the conventional paradigms for marketing organics. The website is full of color and fun and, and smiles and people living life to its fullest. That's the presentation of organic, always on the positive, always on the up. A brand or an organic brand can become a member. A non-organic brand uh, can become an ally. The most important thing is the engagement rate. The average for food and beverage is 0.12%. For all industry is 0.09%. We have influencers. Our taglines and headlines cause a smile, if not out loud laughter in some of the comments we turn to. Our fun <laughs> generates a 13.5% engagement rate. So we claim we're 13,166% funnier than anybody else. That engagement rate is where the money is. And uh, so we've refined that skill. How can OMA benefit the organic segment of the global tea industry, Dennis? The most important ingredient is the tea workers and farmers, and they can join for free. Because without the organic farmers, we've got nothing. As we say, the time is now. Join the fun. And the Organic Market Association is full of fun, designed to encourage people to make the organic good food choice for their own good health. Intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast? Would you like to learn more from our global network of tea biz journalists and tea experts? Contact them directly through Subtext, a private message-based platform. Avoid the chaos of social media and start a conversation that matters. Subtext's message-based platform lets you privately ask meaningful questions of the tea experts, academics, and tea biz journalists reporting from the tea lands. You see their responses via SMS texts, which are sent direct to your phone. Visit our website and subscribe to Subtext to instantly connect with the most connected people in tea. Remember to visit the TBiz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week. Get ahead of postage rate increases this year with Stamps.com. It's like your own personal post office. Sign up with promo code PROGRAM for a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. That's Stamps.com code PROGRAM.